Good morning, everybody. Let's move move along here. Chapter 18, Boy in the Striped Pajamas. There's only two more readings left. We're going to do this one, and then we're going to do chapter 19 and chapter 20 together, because uh, chapter 20 is really short. Um, so thanks again to Scholastic for allowing us to do this. Uh, questions have been posted online, so um, on the Google Classroom. So let's get reading. Chapter 18, Thinking Up the Final Adventure. The day after Father told Bruno that he would be returning to Berlin soon, Schmel didn't arrive at the fence as usual, nor did he show up the day after that. On the third day when Bruno arrived, there was no one sitting cross-legged on the ground, and he waited for 10 minutes and was about to turn back for home, extremely worried that he would have to leave out with without seeing his friend again when a dot in the distance became a speck and that became a blob and that became a figure and that in turn became the boy in the striped pajamas. Bruno broke into a smile when he saw the figure coming towards him and he sat down on the ground, taking the piece of bread and the apple he had smuggled with him out of his pocket to give Schmel. But even from a distance, he could see that his friend looked even more unhappy than usual. And when he got to the fence, he didn't reach for the food with his usual eagerness. I thought you, were, you weren't coming anymore, said Bruno. I came yesterday and the day before that, and you weren't here. I'm sorry, said Schmel. Something happened. Bruno looked at him and narrowed his eyes, trying to guess what it might be. He wondered whether Schmel had been told that he was going home too. After all, coincidences like that do happen, such as the fact that Bruno and Schmel shared the same birthday. Well, asked Bruno, what was it? Papa, said Schmel, we can't find him. Can't find him? That's very odd. You mean he's lost? I suppose so, said Schmel. He was here on Monday, and then he went on work duty with some other men, and none of them have come back. And hasn't he written you a letter, asked Bruno, or left a note to say when he'll be coming back? No, said Schmel. How odd, said Bruno. Have you looked for him, he asked her after a moment. Of course I have, said Schmel with a sigh. I did what you're always talking about. I did some exploration, and there was no sign. None. Well, that's very strange, said Bruno, but I think there must be a simple explanation. And what's that, asked Schmel. I imagine the men were taken to a work in another town. And they have to stay there for a few days until the work is done. And the, and the post isn't very good here anyway. I expect he'll turn up one day soon. I hope so, said Schmel, who looked as if he was about to cry. I don't know what we're supposed to do without him. I could ask father if you wanted, said Bruno cautiously, hoping that Schmel wouldn't say yes. I don't think that would be a good idea, said Schmel which to Bruno's disappointment was not a flat out rejection of the offer. Why not? He asked, fa he asked. Father is very acknowledgeable about life on the other side of the fence. I don't think the soldiers like us, said Schmel. Well, he added with something as close to a laugh as he could muster. I know they don't like us. They hate us. Bruno sat back in surprise. I'm sure they don't hate you, he said. They do, said Schmel, leaning forward, his eyes narrowing and his lips curling up with a little anger. But that's all right because I hate them too. I hate them, he repeated forcefully. You don't hate father, do you? asked Bruno. Schmel bit his lip and said nothing. He had seen Bruno's father on any number of occasions and couldn't understand how such a man could have a son who was so friendly and kind. Anyway, said Bruno after a suitable pause, not wishing to discuss that topic any further. I have something to tell you too. You do? asked Schmel, looking up hopefully. Yes, I'm going back to Berlin. Schmel's mouth dropped open in surprise. When, he asked, his voice catching slightly in his throat as he did so. Well, this is Thursday, said Bruno, and we're leaving on Saturday after lunch. But for how long, asked Schmel. I think it's forever, said Bruno. Mother doesn't like it, he got out with. She says it's no place to bring up two children. So father is staying here to work because the Fury has big things in mind for him, but the rest of us are going home. He said the word home, despite the fact that he wasn't sure where home was anymore. So I won't see you again, asked Schmel. Well, someday, yes, said Bruno. You come on a holiday to Berlin. You, get, you can't stay here forever after all, can you? Schmel shook his head. I suppose not, he said sadly. I won't have anyone to talk to anymore when you're gone, he added. No, said Bruno. He wanted to add the words, I'll miss you too, Schmel, to the sentence, but found that he was a little embarrassed to say them. So tomorrow will be the last time we see each other then until, until then. He continued, we'll have to say our goodbyes then. 
I'll bring to you, I'll, I'll try to bring you an extra special treat. Schmal nodded but couldn't find any words to express his sorrow. I wish we'd get to play together, said Bruno after a long pause. Just once, just to remember. So do I, said Schmel. We've been talking to each other for more than a year now, and we never got to play once. And do you know what else, he added. All this time I've been watching where you live from out of my bedroom window, and I've never even seen for myself what it's like. You wouldn't like it, said Schmel. Yours is much nicer, he added. I'd still like to have seen it, said Bruno. Schmel thought for a few moments and then reached down and put his hand under the fence and lifted it a little. To the height where a small boy, perhaps the size and shape of Bruno, could fit underneath. Well, said Schmel, why don't you then? Bruno blinked and thought about it. I don't think I'd be allowed, he said doubtfully. Well, you're probably not allowed to come here and talk to me every day either, said Schmel. But you still do it, don't you? But if I was caught, I'd be in trouble, said Bruno, who was sure mother and father would not approve. That's true, said Schmel, lowering the fence again and looking at the ground with tears in his eyes. I suppose I'll see you tomorrow to say goodbye then. Neither boy said anything for a moment. Suddenly, Bruno had a brainwave. Unless, he began, thinking about it for a moment and allowing a plan to hatch in his head. He reached a hand up to his head and felt where his hair used to be, but was now just stubble that hadn't fully grown back. Don't you remember that you said I looked like you? He, he asked, Schmel, since I had my head shaved. Only fatter, conceded Schmel. Well, if that's the case, said Bruno, and if I had a pair of striped pajamas too, then I could come over on a visit, and no one would be any the wiser. Schmel's face brightened up, and he broke into a wide smile. Do you think so, he asked. Would you do it? Of course, said Bruno. It would be a great adventure, our final adventure. I could do some exploring at last. You could help me look for Papa, said Schmel. Why not, said Bruno. We'll take a walk around and see whether we can find any evidence. That's always wise when you're exploring. The only problem is getting a spare pair of striped pajamas. Schmel shook his head. That's all right, he said. There's a hut where they keep them, and I can get, and I can get some in my size and bring them with me. Then you can change, and we can look for Papa. Wonderful, said Bruno, caught up in the enthusiasm of the moment. Then it's a plan. We'll meet at the same time tomorrow, said Schmel. Don't be late this time, said Bruno, standing up and dusting himself down. And don't forget the striped pajamas. Both boys went home in high spirits that afternoon. Bruno imagined a great adventure ahead and finally an opportunity to see what was really on the other side of the fence before he went back to Berlin, not to mention get a little serious exploration as well. Ishmael saw a chance to get someone to help him in the search for his papa. All in all, it seemed like a very sensible plan and a good way to say goodbye. And that is chapter 18. We'll read the very last chapter um, tomorrow night, chapter 19 and 20. Everybody have a great day.